I want to start my lecture. That's already you, you see, that's you, everybody you know, uh, that is the uh, name of the Muslim. Uh, we used to say it's Dhakai Muslim. So this is a, a project that has, uh, that was being uh, initiated by the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina of Bangladesh. That's the preamble. Uh, she came to the Ministry of uh, Textile and Jute and she uh, advised uh, relevant officers to initiate a program uh, for reviving the weaving and spinning technology of uh, Dhakai Muslim. So any other, it was in 19, uh, 2014. And any other way, I had chance to integrate it with this project uh, almost on the basis of a chance, because during that time, I had opportunity to meet a meet with the Minister of uh, Textile and Jute. Um, and on the, on the way of discussion, suddenly this uh, uh, topic was coming out and uh, Honorable Minister, he requested me to involve uh, uh, prepare a project proposal and initiate a research uh, project. So we prepared a project and we start work since, we have been working since 2015. Uh, this is a, a big project. And a, 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 as I, 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 I want to mention it, uh, the scientists from five different organizations uh, have been involved in this project. Like me from Russia University, I have another two colleagues, Professor Mustafa Rahman, Professor Firo Jalam, and uh, Bangladesh Cotton Union Development Board, uh, Mr. Akhtar Jaman. You, you know, Bootex, he's a famous uh, textile engineer, uh, Professor Ali Jaman. Dean and Register of Bootex, Bangladesh Textile University, and uh, BHB, Bangladesh Cotton Development Board. They have four uh, textile engineers and PD from uh, Project uh, BHB, Bangladesh uh, uh, Handloom Board, and uh, one professor from Dhaka University, Professor Bulbon Osman. He is one of the senior most professors. He is a professor of fine, fine arts. So it was a uh, great opportunity for me to coordinate all of these guys and to conduct this type of research for long term, although it is uh, very hard. So uh, before going to discuss, we, I would like to uh, uh, say we need to define Muslim, what we actually understand from the word Muslim, uh, that is any types of fabrics that is made up uh, finest yarn of cotton, linen, silks, other types of materials. But in case of Dhakai Muslim, this is absolutely prepared from cotton. James Taylor in 1851, he told us Dhaka Muslim, but Professor uh, A. Korin, he used this term Dhakai Muslim. So from, from this uh, 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 so forth, I will uh, tell our discussion uh, subject the Muslim as a Hakai Muslim. Our aim and objective was uh, to divide the uh, weaving and spinning technology of Hakai Muslim. So we have a big planning. I don't like to discuss everything. Uh, but I want to mention something that is uh, we used to see uh, say count. Count measures the fineness of cotton yarn. And uh, I want to explain it. That is, uh, uh, maybe someone you know, uh, what, what does it mean of uh, count? Count means that is the length is uh, divided by the weight. Say for uh, a cotton uh, a yarn, is one kilometer length when it is uh, it will be divided by the uh, weight in gram 
and the result will be the count. So, uh, in terms of uh, count, if fabrics is made up of more than 300 metric counts cotton yarn, we will say it as a Muslim cloth. So, our goal was said to uh, find a cotton variety and and to uh, spin cotton yarn that is uh, starting from uh, 300 count and more. So it was a meticulous planning. I think I, I need to explain this one. Uh, maybe you are reading this. We have a, a meticulous planning, elaborate planning of this work. Uh, among them, there's a, initially there's the literature review, then finding of Dhakai Muslim, and each of the stage, step of work, how we did perform this work, I mentioned uh, in separate boxes. Uh, I don't like to explain everything, but because time is very short, only 45 minutes. So then finding cotton variety, then identification field and field evaluation of the uh, uh, cotton varieties, then spinning cotton yards, then uh, weaving cotton sample and production of uh, finished cloth and patenting. So there, uh, if, if, if I should say it grossly, uh, we had to work uh, on these eight heads uh, from literature review to patenting uh, uh, during these last five years. So summary of literature review, uh, this is very important because uh, I didn't find any uh, scientific study uh, on Dhakai Muslim or Muslim. Uh, these are uh, this part of Bangladesh or uh, because it's uh, not so developed. So uh, I found very little interest about the famous scientists they didn't work on uh, Takai Muslim. So I got these uh, historical books. We have we had to collect it, and we also found some papers and documents. Uh, most of the papers of 19th century, and uh, I found only one book, a descriptive and historical account of cotton manufacture. Uh, this book, James Taylor, he was a representative of East India Company and he was living at Dhaka city, the then Dhaka city. And he wrote a book, small book, and he described how Muslim was, uh, how, how people uh, uh, manufacture Dhaka Muslim. It was uh, this book, only one book, this described the process of uh, weaving Dhaka Muslim. So uh, uh, literature review, we, uh, uh, through literature review, we got so many important points and that helped us to uh, what to do for reviving uh, Dhakai Muslim. So our limitation was we, none of the member of this research team didn't see, they, they didn't see original Dhakai Muslim. As for me, I also I, did, I, I saw Dhakai Muslim at Victoria and Albert Museum, British Museum. And uh, I saw also Dhakai Muslim, our national museum. Uh, but most of, I have no idea because I, I only visually observed that one. Uh, I had no chance to observe particularly, but I didn't have that intention. intention uh, before uh, involving with this project. So uh, we required the basic knowledge of the Muslim fabrics first. So they are, uh, we consider it, this is the baseline. So we need a Muslim fabric. So initially we targeted to visit our national museum, but we failed to get it, get in. Uh, finally we got it, but Dhaka, uh, Muslim preserved in Dhaka, uh, National Museum, there are three pieces of Muslims, but two pieces are not actually Dhaka Muslim. 
rather they are uh, different types of clothes. Only one uh, turban, part of the turban that is Thakai Muslim. We, uh, we started our project at 19, uh, 2015, but we didn't get any permission to visit or study that uh, uh, the sample Thakai Muslim. So our uh, uh, prime minister, patron, he advised us to go to Victoria and Albert Museum and we communicated and we studied um, most in there. Before going to uh, Victoria and Albert Museum, we also tried to collect Muslim sample from Bangladesh, from uh, public, from uh, general public. So we made advertisement in newspaper and, and te television channel. But any anyway, other, we, we, uh, we found more than thousand people, uh, they communicated with us, but we didn't get any true Muslim. We visited some places and we got some uh, 200 or more than 200 uh, old uh, fabrics, but these are not, these were not Muslim. Uh, these are uh, made uh, woven with uh, silk. O silk woven fabric is not Muslim. Muslim must be woven with cotton. So then uh, uh, we uh, decided to go to Victoria and Albert Museum. And this was a great opportunity for us to see original Muslim and the curator of the uh, fabric section of Victoria and Albert Museum, you know, Victoria and Albert Museum, is the largest museum in the world. So they have so many sections and that's a fabric is another South fabric section of South East Asia. As curator, Mr. B, Ms. Divya Patel, he, she helped us and she gave us opportunity to study. So these are the Muslim. I had opportunity to touch it and I had, we had Professor Alimud Jaman. He studied and uh, carefully and uh, museum authority supplied us flash magnifier and other necessary things. So they, they understand our uh, objective of the visiting Victoria and Albert Museum. Accordingly, they helped us. So we uh, gathered a lot of information and we had another opportunity to uh, meet uh, Dr. Sonia Ashmore. He did PhD on Muslim. It was a rare opportunity and he wrote a book on Muslim in, and that was published in 2012. So we, I, we attend her lecture and actually the basic thing we learned, we, what we wanted to start our research program. Then we came back and uh, we, then we got the chance, that is, uh, after three years of initiating project, 2018, we also went to the, a national museum and we studied. And that is a single piece of Muslim, Thakai Muslim. We also studied uh, Muslim in India. You know, Muslim uh, has been weaving in uh, West Bengal since 1990s. And uh, uh, they are mostly, they are, they are uh, weaving mostly on commercial basis, but their material was different and they are mostly, they are, they are even 500, 700 count uh, mostly fab fabrics. Uh, those are not similar to that said Hakai Muslim. They are, have been using different types of cotton. This is called Shubhin, Shubhin cotton. The Shubin cotton is a hybrid of the, the Barbadens, that is the Egyptian cotton and uh, Gossipium arborium, that's the tree cotton of India. So th this muslin uh, are so nice to look, but when we touch it, it's not smooth like Victorian, Al those we found in Victorian Albert Museum. Then uh, uh, our activity was, that is the most important thing to find finding appropriate cotton variety that was being used in Dhaka Muslim weaving. And we developed two hypotheses. One, that is the footy, oh, the, the cotton uh, used to say uh, during media, uh, medieval time of Bangladesh, 
Futi Karpas. Futi Karpas was being used uh, as a source of cotton for weaving Thakai Muslim. So uh, during uh, this is a common sense for a botanist. Uh, I thought it must be a land race and did a, it should be found somewhere in Bangladesh still growing in wild condition. That is our hard to, uh, plan A. So we uh, took decision to uh, organize expedition uh, to some important part of Bangladesh where uh, Muslim fabrics uh, had been uh, produced. Hypothesis two, we developed, if we fail to get any a source of wild cotton in Bangladesh, then we'll go to uh, go abroad to find, uh, to survey the repository, cotton repository, and especially we targeted to go to uh, Egypt, India, Pakistan, and uh, Central Asia. Then plan A, searching uh, footy carpus among the wild cotton plasm within Bangladesh. So uh, actually nobody saw the footy carpus plant. So we draw his hypothetical case as per the description of Dr. Rothbard. And um, we, those people are, uh, have knowledge about botany. Rothbard was a famous botanist. And he described many plants in <coughs> So, uh, the, as per Oxford's dis, dis, description, we uh, draw a sketch like this. And one student of uh, the fine arts faculty of Russia University, I uh, briefed him and he draw this case of uh, hypothetical Futikarpas plant. So uh, we started our expedition, we start from the Kapashia. You know, Kapashia is situated at uh, uh, Gajipur district. And Kapashia, Kapashia one, of, one of my students, he has been working as a principal of uh, Kapashia College. His now, name is Tajuddin. Um, he helped me uh, a lot because, he, you know, it is very difficult. If you, go somewhere to find a particular plant in a forest or locality, it is not possible. So you have to spot it, you have to find it. So uh, Tajuddin, he's a botanist, uh, he helped me and he, uh, we copied the hypothetical case and we uh, pronounced it, it, it uh, about Futikarpas uh, through loudspeaker. And uh, he wrote letter to the different college and schools and madrasas to if, if someone find uh, wild cotton, we also pronounce to uh, give, give him a prize, a, a hand, mobile handset. So that what, uh, I want to say it, Kapashia was known as a Titabadi during the medieval time. Uh, Kapashia's name was Titabadi and Kapashia Jungle Bari and Bajipur. Three, these three places was famous for producing Futikarpas, cultivating Futikarpas, as well as weaving Muslim cloth. So, uh, you know, uh, Futikarpas also grown nearby Dhaka, many places in Dhaka, but uh, nowadays you cannot get any forest or jungle near Dhaka, except Kapashia or Gadipur. So we target Kapashia first. We got this information from Mr. Tasuddin. And he told me, and we got James Taylor's information, Titabadi means Kapashia. And Kapashia has some jung jungle forest too. So we, finally, uh, uh, our team, that is the, uh, what, I, what we can say, it's the community science, participated in science. People's, many people's participated for, in this survey expedition, and they found one, one person, so firstly, he found one uh, plant and he informed us. Actually, we gave him a presentation, uh, gave him a presentation, uh, of, uh, promised presentation, one mobile handset. So we got there and uh, we see the pictures. This plant uh, are growing uh, almost 
uncared and uh, thriving for hundreds of years. And local people know it. They used to collect cotton and they used to prepare pillows and other things. And these are the three cotton like uh, almost all cotton are uh, perennial, you know. If you keep cotton plant, they will not die. So they will keep growing, but these plants are rather bigger in size. So it was a good good luck for us. We got it. And we went to Sajek Valley, and with the help of uh, Bangladesh Cotton Development Board, uh, Ms. Akhtar Javan uh, spotted a few places. So we went to Sajek Valley, and uh, we got plant. This is different than Kapasia, this uh, plant sample, cotton sample. Uh, it, it was amazing. And we also went to Longdu Valley. It is uh, far away from uh, Hagrachori. We had to travel with, by boat for two and a half hours and on foot another two and a half hours. So finally we got a uh, cotton plant. Uh, people used to grow, uh, collect, they, they don't grow it. Just they collect cotton and they, uh, they told us uh, uh, before long time, long time before they used uh, to prepare uh, their own clothes using this uh, cotton. Nowadays they, they don't use, but sometimes they use this cotton to make pillows and quilts or other things like this. These are the plants. And then we went to Bagherhat, interestingly. Uh, Bagherhat, we got another, uh, uh, I got this spot through one of my students. He's a student of uh, journalism. He spotted one uh, plant, a group of plants in a particular place near the Khan, Khan Jahanali uh, mosque. And we went there and we found, and this, is, this plant is very much similar to the Egyptian cotton, uh, old world cotton. And we uh, later on, we, studied uh, uh, cytological, we count chromosome and we found this one is tetraploid, not diploid. Then uh, we went for Rangku, Lalmonirhat and Nilphamari and we got, uh, these are the plants. Uh, these plants are, are also, are also different uh, from Kapashia and that is Khagrachori or Longdu. Uh, they, uh, actually those people, especially Hindu families, they uh, uh, sustain this plant, when you maintain this plant, they used to make uh, what we want to say, that is uh, during their prayer, they used to uh, uh, use a special type of land uh, using mustard oil or ghee, and it, uh, uh, they use as a sholta uh, using this plant. So we got uh, we didn't find a big number of plants, but we found uh, we, we found two, five plants in Rongpu. Then actually we collected this plant and uh, we also found another specimen. Uh, it's, it, it's from Manda Upojila uh, under Naga district and we collected it and actually we, we prepared herbarium and we went for taxonomic ide identification and taxonomic uh, and went for cultivation. So initially we uh, collected seed most of the uh, almost all places and we used root tip uh, for studying chromosome number and we got Kapasia is uh, deployed and uh, Bagherhat was only tetraploid. So it was amazing. We, in our experiment, we used uh, as a Czech species, Gossipium arborea and Gossipium hirsutum. You know, Gossipium, uh, the Futicarpus was Gossipium arborea. Many authors mentioned it, the Gossipium arborea var neglected. But Dr. Roxburgh men mentioned uh, Futicarpus was, was uh, uh, not gossip but uh, so our target was uh, to find uh, gossip arboreum. So we collected seed, original seed of gossip arboreum, 
and gossip from his sutum, you know, uh, at in present world, 95% cotton are being produced using a gossip from his sutum. New world cotton is also tetrapoy as a check piece. So uh, then we set experiment in the field. Uh, you saw the flow chart. And these are the plants we grown in the uh, field of Russia University. We also grew plant uh, in the field of uh, cotton development board that's situated at Sripur. And we collected different types of, uh, there's a breeding data, we used to say. We also uh, studied uh, qualitative character and also quantitative character. So uh, morphological character, we, we, we studied a range of character and we analyzed statistically and uh, we try to establish some relation with footing carpet. And uh, we also studied uh, that's a DNA analysis. We use SSR marker. Actually, we use, we, uh, in, there is a, uh, two websites uh, uh, for providing the marker information about cotton. One is uh, cotton marker uh, site. So we uh, actually selected that's the SSR marker from the website and we uh, synthesize it and actually we amplify DNA and we use uh, uh, this data and we use, that's the dendrogram, that's the uh, SSR marker profile. One of the example, actually SSR marker profile is very much obscure. So sometimes we use uh, uh, different types of uh, not agarose gel electrophoresis. Uh, so uh, most of the bands are small and we count this uh, on the basis of the present rule and we develop dendrogram and we try to correlate to it. And uh, we studied fiber quality. That's the most important. Fiber quality character, that's the flow chart. And we use 17 fiber quality character and we use a uh, high volume in, in instrument. This is uh, this in instrument uh, to collect this data. We collected uh, cotton, those we cultivated in the field and we sent to the uh, particular company, selected company, they, and we got this data and we analyzed it and uh, we try to establish the correlation. There's taxonomical uh, identification and the real uh, uh, fiber quality characters. And almost all study shows that that's the capacia, uh, the morphological character of capacia that is we taxonomically identified as Gossypium arboreum. And the fiber character also uh, shows the similarity and, uh, and morphological character also shows the similarity with the standard Czech variety of gossip. So uh, we uh, concluded that the Capacia collection was gossipium arboreum. That's the nearest to the, we, can, we cannot say, we couldn't say it as a puticarpus. We need to study further. So we went for further study, that is uh, CPDN analysis of cotton fiber. You know, we had uh, medium specimen and medium uh, fiber of the medium specimen is very old. And uh, that's uh, actually fiber should contain uh, genomic DNA, but mostly in fiber they didn't contain any genomic DNA. Uh, this study was also performed by the scientist of Oxford University, uh, Dr. Ashmore. Uh, he, she uh, gave, gave me this information and she uh, wrote to me uh, the comment of the uh, scientist of Oxford University. They didn't get any genomic DNA from the muslin fiber, muslin fabrics fiber. So uh, I, I thought 
um, there may be cpdna chloroplast dna that can sustain very small genocide so and for this this is not uh, new technology you can if this is under the patent of us patent usb 8940485 b2 and uh, this is a commercial technique to identify the source of cotton in uh, branded fabrics uh, they have been operating uh, this system in usa and they you, you must pay if you wish to uh, uh, identify the source of we use, we couldn't use this technology so we i need to modify the technology so our sample was very small amount you know getting muslin is difficult and getting muslin fabrics fiber is too difficult and it's too small quantity so we had to modify it and we actually got uh, that is uh, cpdna you know that's the rbcl ribulose 155 phosphate uh, bis phosphate and we uh, developed this primer this is very common you get this primer uh, i worked on previously on uh, potato cpdna so i had that idea and we uh, designed this primer and we go for amplifier so we use uh, fiber of muslin fiber uh, muslin fabrics and the capacia sample cotton fabrics and the fabrics of the standard variety so we got this pro profile this is cpdna uniform band even hagratsuri and other uh, dna from other cpdna from other species arborium capacia and muslin but after uh, digestion we we use 10 uh, restriction enzyme we got polymorphism in two restriction enzyme digestion but i didn't mention it because we didn't publish this result so i want to keep it secret still so we got this result this one you can see the arborium capacia and muslin fabrics they developed clear band after cutting with uh mostly restriction enzyme and this is another digestion and so we can say uh, the most the muslin uh, uh, cotton was coming from the capacia uh, type cotton variety that is arborium type so we can say the uh, arborium cotton we got in capacia that was being that was being used to cultivate in uh, the uh, titabadi these in titabadi or kapashi area and they use uh, to spin use this cotton to spin uh, cotton yarn for weaving uh, these in dhaka mostly but i want to mention here that is uh, most of the people used to say nowadays it was gossipium arborium var neglecta this is very controversial i got so many reports some uh, scientists say the fiber of gossypium arborium var neglecta is is short and coarse is not fine rather gossypium arborium var bengalens that was more suitable and some uh, some scientists used to think that wa was being used uh, for weaving uh, spinning cotton yarn and we will uh, find its fabrics in india you know actually uh, arborium cotton uh, popularly or commonly you should say everybody uh, 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 roxburg or other other uh, attraction of it they uh, mentioned it as a tree cotton and widely cultivated throughout the eastern and southern part of india and uh, gossypium arborium has very fine quality cotton and that was used in all over the india for uh, spinning high quality and high count cotton yarn so we supposed to uh, think that is that is uh, uh, the cotton uh, variety newly collected cotton variety that's the capacia one 
we went for cultivation in bigger field and we produced cotton. And then we supplied it to the, our second team. Those are responsible for screening cotton here. It is a meticulous, difficult work. And actually we supplied all types of cotton. Those, those we collected not only uh, from our wild collection, but we also collected some cotton like Egyptian cotton and other, uh, other cotton uh, to the second team. Uh, so they can uh, taste the spinability of the cotton. And finally, uh, we found uh, Kapashia cotton is very much suitable uh, for spinning finest quality of cotton yarn. So uh, it was a meticulous work, difficult work, you know, uh, that is the spinning. I, uh, it, I was thinking spinning would be the hardest part of, the, of our research. So we had a plan, actually, we uh, trained hand spinner, you know, uh, hand spinner all are women. And mostly they are, they are aged from 16 to uh, 30. Uh, initially, our team selected 100 hand spinner. Those actually used to spin, hand spin, uh, cotton yarn for khadi, you know, kumilla khadi, kumilla khadi is famous. And we selected, picked up 100 hand spinner and we brought them in a center and we train, uh, test them. And finally we selected uh, 40 and then finally it was reduced to six. And uh, it took two years to train them uh, to spin the cotton yarn that, 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 uh, that is more than 300 pounds. Now, uh, in this time, at the present, we have 22 uh, hand spinner. We trained them. Uh, and later on, uh, initially, we sp uh, trained six person. This six person trained another uh, 16 person, 16 women. They are uh, spinning cotton here using the cotton we are uh, produced from copper share type. So they can spin from 300, 300 count to uh, 600, 557 count now. It has uh, sustainability, sustainably and repeatedly they can uh, do this. This is the operational training activities. And this is the ladies. We, we need you know, to modify our uh, textile engineers. They modify the spinner, spinning machine. And uh, in, in med during medieval time, uh, spinning work also done by the women, but they use drop spinning. Amra jeta ke boli taku, taku type of spin tar So our textile engineer, they modify the spinning machine. And uh, that is, there are lots of modification like this ang angular distance and rotation speed and so many things. And we developed this type of hand spinner machine. And you know, this is very difficult job. You have to hold cotton in one hand and you have to, they say, they used to say it's the work of three fingers. And before actually uh, uh, spinning, uh, we need to gain the cotton and we need to still stay straight, make straight the fiber and we supply to the spinner. But uh, spinning high quality cotton is, uh, depends on the psychological condition of the hand spinner. If any spinner psychology is being psychology disturbed, they cannot make this fine quality uh, cotton. So they cannot even uh, cut their vegetable with this finger because if their uh, finger become coarse, then they cannot spin this type of uh, Finest quality cotton. There are lots, lots of hard, uh, uh, hurdle, but um, ultimately they came up and they adapted with this situation and they successfully spin this type of finest quality cotton. And these are the cotton you see, uh, and these these are so thin. You can see it's a 500 count cotton, 
and it's very difficult to uh, see uh, in naked eye uh, for the people in my age without spectacle. So, so uh, another important, uh, this is the, uh, it's called Sana. Sana is, 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 is another story, you know, Sana uh, has been uh, making in uh, Rubgons for, for centuries. Uh, people used to say uh, this part of Bangladesh used to export Sana to Egypt or even England. They use special type of bamboo. Sana, Sana kotha ta amit bakha kori boli. Sana hoche ki je shuta gulu ka alada kori rakhi. So the Sana te daat thake, there is a dent that is made with uh, bamboo, special type of bam bamboo. And in case of mostly they use uh, 2,800 dent. That is, uh, we used to say to work longitudinally, lambda tana boli, tana te, uh, so Sana has a big story. We explored it and someone wish to make a PhD degree of Sana, how they, they were being prepared. And they, uh, these people are very much old. And you know, we requested them, they uh, prepared special type Sana that is they used to forget it because nobody nowadays used 200, 2,800 dented finest for So it was another story. Uh, and after uh, spinning finest quality cotton, yarn, um, you know, weaving is a hazardous uh, uh, work. So if yarn is Week, so it's easy to break or, or uh, tear up. So before uh, going with him, uh, it was uh, we we need to develop a technique that was being used by the medieval time, a special type of uh, uh, rice starch, special type of rice starch uh, after boiling. Amrajitabuli marcoron. We use that one and we apply to the yarn and dry it. And then we uh, prepare reeds and we apply to the heel. That's a bobin preparation, it's a step through process. And this is, this is warping, you know, it's Samra Boliji Tana Deva Jara Tadrisin, she Tana. Tana was if uh, we follow the medieval process. And that was described by the James Taylor in 1951. So uh, then Sana applying to the Sana, uh, same process, two women sitting face to face. The, as per the description of this James Taylor, they are applying uh, individual after, after warping, individual thread through the individual dent of the Sana. Then it's called beam, uh, pre weaving process, and boo preparation, applying to the reed in English, it say. Uh, then finally, weaving. Weaving, we, we used to, uh, technical textile term is called wept. After Shabai Janenje, it's made of bamboo. It's almost, uh, if you, uh, if anyone, if you go through the book of James Taylor, you can see this type of drawing uh, using bamboo. So very simple, peak loop. Even uh, waved, 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 we used to say it's called uh, shuttle peak loom. So uh, waved is played in a shuttle. So uh, weaver used to shuttle uh, the uh, yarn uh, in between two parts of alternately two parts of the web. Wow. So this is weaving process. And finally, we prepared a test mostly in fabrics. <coughs> so uh, 
sorry but i would like to uh, mention another point actually uh, uh, for the standardization of process we imported 300 pound uh, cotton fabrics from china to train uh, the weaver tanti the training dar jonno amdani kora hoy ebong tar test shari toiri kore and this is test uh, uh, muslin fabrics we, we, we can say now that was made using our own uh, cotton own yarn and the uh, petrol and we presented it to our honorable prime minister and these are the sample of cotton you can see this so uh, if uh, we can show you this because we have this uh, uh, this a comparing uh, you saw this picture uh, uh, when i was uh, displaying it in uh, during the visit in uh, victoria albert museum this cotton uh, fabrics was uh, woven in 1713 and this is our newly woven we prepared here so uh, maybe you can find because this is the new one and this is old one uh, i think uh, almost two, uh, more than 200 years old so our new one is very much comparable with this one uh, and looking better than previous one because still uh, because it's, uh, because uh, maybe it's older so we applied for gi patent and fortunately bangladesh got the gi patent of dhaka muslim so it's a, a great uh, um, opportunity and happiness for us our team they finally we could uh, find the appropriate cotton and we test them analyze them and we prove them this cotton variety could be used as a source of cotton for uh, spinning high count cotton yarn that would be suitable for uh, weaving Dhaka Muslim. Conclusion, the data generated on different experiments through, uh, di through different experiments are used to identify Pudikarpas cotton and that was being used making Dhaka Muslim. The overall result suggests that Puti, uh, the Kapashia collection is three cotton of Gossipium arborium genotype that match with the historical document. Uh, successfully and sustainably spinning high quality, high common cotton yarn, suitable for Dhaka Muslim weaving, successfully woven Dhaka Muslim. That is, uh, re revival of Kuti Karpas will help Bangladesh to create its own global brand fab fabrics and to acquire Dhaka Muslim. We can, uh, it will create, maybe we hope, uh, job opportunities in Bangladesh and uh, actually creating Dhakai Muslim. Dhakai Muslim is a world bank. Every each and every uh, people that I encountered, they encouraged me and said, if you revive these uh, fabrics, there is a business opportunity. Even my Japanese friend, they saw different, they used to tell me they, they, they are seeing different dreams. The, what they told me, they are seeing uh, time will come when uh, the big buildings uh, in Gajipur or around Dhaka, those are making garments works. Uh, in future, they will uh, make uh, commercial Dhakai muslin fabrics. Not, not only sari, but uh, muslin fabrics has different demand. Uh, we also saw in, in, saw in Murshidabad, they are making uh, Muslim fabrics and many Japanese businessmen used to uh, go there and uh, people from USA or uh, European businessmen, they used to purchase and they uh, used to produce different uh, 
highly high, high highly high quality costly fabrics from using uh, the muslin fabric so there may be some opportunity and uh, yes that's all uh, my recommendation uh, our work is going on genome sequencing actually we want to patent and the capacity cotton uh, actually we contact with some organ one organization in uk they uh, they are they are doing this work for us and genome sequencing is not difficult but uh, analysis of sequence that data is difficult so we don't have any expertise i have some expertise but i don't think this is enough to enough knowledge for uh, analyzing sequence data so after uh, sequencing they will also i have one student there uh, and he is a he is an assistant professor uh, he has been working on bioinformatics and he is helping us for this and uh, our um, next plan is we at least we used to uh, Uh, produce 40 to 50 different items of clothes, Thakai Muslim clothes. And we used to hold a fashion show. And that is, we need to mechanize it. What we saw in India, in India, uh, uh, there are two places. There's now seven places they are making Muslim fabrics, but they are uh, not spinning. Uh, cotton yarn using hand. Rather, they use uh, machine, automatic machine for preparation of saliva. Uh, but I want to, uh, I would like to mention here that that is Gossipium arborium is deployed, produce very fine quality uh, cotton, but cotton is not staple length is short, medium, medium. So. Uh, uh, I don't know this type of cotton can be used for sliver machine, size sliver machine. If uh, we can make sliver using uh, uh, machine, then uh, our, and we, if we use a spinning machine, automatic or semi-automatic um, machine, then we can speed up the uh, process of spinning and uh, uniformity and quality quality and we if we, we we use that is we can use that is weaving process is not so uh, difficult but spinning fine quality consistently fine quality cotton is difficult so in th this phase we can uh, go for machine and we can use pit loom for weaving or we can use power loom or semi-automatic power loom for make, making Muslim work. That, that is Indian people, people of West Bengal. Those two guys, they leaded the uh, uh, reviving of more Indian Muslim. And these two guys already did. They uh, went to India from Bangladesh. They were working in Tangail district. So after uh, independence of India, First Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru initiated a program of revival of Thakai Muslim. But after maybe 45 years, uh, Bangladesh started to reviving Thakai Muslim. I think uh, we could successfully uh, do it, and Thakai Muslim is coming back. Thank you so much for uh, patient hearing. This is the time. If, if we have any question, I will answer. I will try to answer it.